everyone, this is Ronnie Gaboon, and today I am in my creative world to show you how to make a fully automatic potion brewer. Alright, so to build this, you are going to need a very minimum of 21 miscellaneous blocks, 4 repeaters, 3 comparators, 3 redstone torches, 23 redstone dust, 18 hoppers, 1 brewing stand, 4 chests, and 5 droppers. You might need more hoppers if you want to add some additional features as well as maybe a couple more chests. So let's go check out the system. This is this arm right here is the extended arm. This can be made much smaller, much e more easily, or very easily, but I decided to do it this way just for simplicity's sake so you can learn how to do it. Um, once you understand how it works, you can change this to wrap around in a very concise and compact way. <clears throat> so here's what happens. This potion stand is fed by these droppers which each contain items. The items flow down into these hoppers and the ingredients for the potions flow into here. If there is one ingredient in this hopper right here, all this redstone will be activated. As soon as that last ingredient goes into the brewing stand, it will activate the mechanism and the mechanism will replace the bottles. It'll take all the water bottles, all the finished potions out of the brewing stand and put them in this chest. It'll replace it with new water bottles from this chest and the droppers will be triggered to send new ingredients down to the brewing stand. So let's take a look at how it's built. I've divided one, two, three, these three lateral layers into three separated layers for ease of use, ease of building, to make it easy for you to conceptualize how to build this. I'll, so first we just have some very simple, there's the ground, then there are three blocks in this configuration, a repeater set to four ticks, and a redstone torch that points to a hopper. The hopper has to be pointing into this brewing stand right here. Now next we look over to the next layer. This is a little bit more complicated. Starting from the bottom, we have a repeater pointing to a hopper. This hopper again should be pointing to the chest over here, hopper pointing that direction. A brewing stand, a hopper leading down into the brewing stand, and a block. Now what happens is this comparator tells whether there's an item in this hopper or not activates this torch which that block above that block right there needs to be there so that these two redstone can turn on and shut off this hopper next we have a repeater set to the first setting and a comparator facing back to this block these two comparators work together to make a monostable circuit that just uh, adjusts the tick length to be stable redstone in between each of these blocks and another repeater set to four ticks facing at this hopper. Finally, we need hoppers that, I actually forgot to put a hopper here, there should be one hopper that leads into the hopper above the brewing stand. So hopper, a chest, this chest is where all the finished potions are going to collect, and then some blocks and some redstone. <clears throat> and that's it. Um, the only thing that I have skipped here, outside of these three layers, is right here, at any of these three places, it doesn't matter which one, we need a repeater coming out. We'll set this repeater to four ticks. Place a block here, place a redstone torch here and we're just going to run some wiring to the rest of the hopper train. And this will go just like this. And we'll hook up the redstone just like this so that droppers can be pointed this way to drop items into the hoppers. And that's just how that works. It's pretty simple. Now if we look over here, I've done the same thing. This redstone torch lights all this redstone. 
and these droppers are spaced apart on these hoppers so that the items don't glitch and overlap. Um, you can do them right next to each other, just like this, but it's likely that sometimes the items will come out of order. So I, I use those extra hoppers as a buffer. You could also use repeaters with delayed ticks to delay these droppers successfully, um, successively rather. <clears throat> but this system works flawlessly, and I like it because it uses less redstone, causes less lag. It's a good thing. So um, if you want to increase storage, you can very easily add some chests over here with a hopper pointing into this chest and you could iterate that as many times as you want to have seemingly infinite storage as long as you build it high enough. Um, over here you can add more to the input by adding hoppers with more chests here and this way you can have many 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 water bottles added and you could just let it run for a long long time. Now how to place items in here. So for example, if I want to make an invisibility potion, I will need nether wart. And the location of nether wart is very important. Now I'll teach you how to stock your fully functioning brewer. The first thing you have to do is you have to add items. Now, when you brew potions, the first thing that you need to put in there is nether wart. But with this system, it actually needs to be the last thing. We want it in the last dropper because we need to prime the next cycle. So we're going to put some nether wart in the very last dropper. And then we want the other ingredients to be put in the correct order. So for example, if I want an invisibility potion, I'm going to need golden carrots. I'm going to need a mushroom or a fermented spider eye. and I can extend it with redstone and I can even make it splash with gunpowder. So if I'm going to make an invisibility potion I need golden carrots. I need to invert those golden carrots to change how they work using fermented spider eyes. I need to lengthen the signal, lengthen the duration of the potion with redstone dust, and I'll turn it into a splash potion with gunpowder. And just like before, we're going to have nether wart in the very last spot, which seems counterintuitive, but this is actually going to prime the next potion. So you'll only have to do this one time, the very first time you use your brewer. To prime the system, you just have to put a nether wart in this very first hopper, and then you will never have to do it again. Now from now on, I'm just going to get some water bottles. I'll just do six for now, but really you could put as many as you want in there. And the water bottles will automatically go into there, go into the brewing stand, and they will start brewing. And this will need to be fixed, just to, to fix the order, no problem. <coughs> And as you can see, another wart is supposed to go in the very last spot. Okay, now that this system is running, it should run correctly about all the rest of the time. We have the correct items in the correct places. And what we should see, extended invisibility potions that are splash potions in this bottom chest over here when it's finished. And they will continue to be made as long as there are water bottles. As soon as we run out of water bottles in here, the system will automatically shut off. And to turn it back on, all you have to do is add more water bottles. I like to set up mine with a hopper like this. And I'll actually bring it out a couple more. And I'll use some blocks. Here's what I'll do. I'll use pressure plates to hold back some water. I'll place this in a circle there. I'll place some water down. Then I'll get some glass bottles. I'll change my game mode. 
And then all I have to do is right click until my inventory fills and they'll all go on this hopper. And that hopper will sit there and absorb items and put them right in this chest. Okay, so instead what we'll do is we'll just right click and these water bottles will fill up my inventory and since it's already filled up I just keep right clicking and they get tossed right there. I can throw in these water bottles also and they'll fill up this chest. Great. Now since that chest is filled up and I have enough items in these droppers they'll continue to keep cooking potions until they run out of water bottles and that's how it works. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching. Click here for a tutorial on how to build a mobile PvP base fully equipped with TNT cannons and turrets, or you can click here for my fully invisible PvP trap. It's based off of an undetectable proximity detector that I invented myself. Or click here for my Factions Let's Play series.